What's going on, bus riders? Welcome back to another episode 75 of On the Bus Podcast. But we got some dates first and foremost. October, early October, October 2nd through 9th. Daniel, I, we're here. We're going to be in New York. We're doing some shows. We're doing some episodes. We are going on some adventures here in the Big Apple. So if you're here, if you know you're going to be here, if you know you're going to be here with us, you want to collab, you want to get going, hit us up at onthebuspodcast at gmail.com or on the bus podcast where you listen to shows. And early December, LA, we're back. We're coming for you. We're coming in hot. We're going to be entering the Silicon Beach Film Festival. We're going to be putting a little piece together from the Save the Dina Tour. So everybody out there, December 7th through 9th, that Silicon Beach FF, it's not live yet, but you know the dates, you know to be ready, and you know to be in LA on those dates and times. We're so looking forward to sharing a lot of the stuff and a very, very beautiful culmination in peace from the Save the Dina Tour, everything that happened in South America. And guys, if you can't wait, you want to go check out some of that stuff from South America, head over to our YouTube page and all of our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. all the places that we have the content being distributed and put out there. Go check out some of the old episodes and go ahead and subscribe to this episode as well as to the YouTube channel. We're huge thank you supporters. All you guys who support us out there, huge thanks. We love you. We thank you. And welcome on the bus. Now, on to today's guest. It's episode 75. It's a special episode. So you know who we brought back. No other than Dr. Jeff Morris, episode one and episode six, one of our good old friends. And Jeff Morris, if anybody doesn't know, he's a research fellow at the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine and resident physicians at Larkin Community Hospital. He's also a five-time collegiate All-American tennis player. Not only that, he's a close friend. He's published several, several, several papers, dermoscopy and skin cancer research. This guy knows his stuff. He's the master dermatologist. And, uh, you know, every show we have with him is one wacky, fun-filled, and wild adventure. So, everybody, episode 75, Dr. Jeff Morris, a.k.a. Dr. Money. <laughs> We started the last one with a toast, but I mean... It's, it's only fitting. It's only fitting. I mean, there, there's a lot of things that just aren't fitting these days. I mean, we're talking about there's pegging trends going on. <laughs> I mean, think about the incest porn is like at an all-time high, like the number one trending thing. And, is, that, is that true? Yeah, you're a doctor. It's like, like the mom porn, like, or like MILFs or just... It's just the number one trending thing or like sleeping with your sister porn. Like, it, I don't even... Obviously, in the... It's just in the title that it says that in the shitty acting where that goes on. But there has to be some sort of there has to be some sort of psychological, sociological roots for for us to like. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't buy it. Just because I know that they're not really related. It's just like I'm not buying it. These are, act- <laughs> These are actors, you know. I'm really not feeling it. And like this is just this is knew- this doesn't. <laughs> What if, what if they showed you ID, brother, sister? Would, would that interest you? <laughs> fake ID. That's fake news. There's no way. Okay, they could show me twins, and then I'd, identical twins, and I'd buy that, but I haven't seen that yet. Well, I mean, I think there's definitely – actually, I have seen that. And um, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, You can't put that in a beaker. You can't put that in a test tube. No, no. And you no. can't tell people. I actually read an article yesterday that the DEA just um, came out, but uh, they're claiming that – Synthetic marijuana is better for you or healthier for you than regular marijuana. And I just thought that was the dumbest, dumb Why? dumb post of the day. <laughs> just because, I mean, there's so much synthetic marijuana that's actually killing people. People were you know, putting bath salts to all these people, eating people's faces, walking around like zombies. But it's actually a lot of this synthetic marijuana where they can just change up the compound that's made in a, in a huge, huge, huge dirty container in a Chinese warehouse and then just shipped over here, but it's technically claimed legal because the compounds are switched up and just how different chemistry is written up and it can get past U.S. law. And yet the DEA is saying that, no, 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 we we found the one that's okay, but the real stuff, yeah, yeah, don't do it. There's no, was was Schedule 1 claimed that there's no... Not only is there no uh, medicinal benefit, uh, but it has highly addictive potential. So yeah. it's those two things in combination uh, make something Schedule One. I mm-hmm. think the public is just this low-hanging fruit that we just can't make our own decisions for ourselves. We cannot grow our own plants. We can't smoke our own opioids. Can't collect your own rainwater. No, all of those things. I mean, the truth is, now that I really think about it, some people don't want to get vaccinations. 
they and measles, measles, measles are at an all time high. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on both sides here. Another report, it was in the EU, that measles are at an all time high. Because people are refusing to get vaccinations because they're like, oh, well, yeah, I never ever got, I don't know anybody that's gotten measles. Yes, because we've done such a good job <laughs> at containing this disease. Go get vaccinated. It's yeah. almost gone. It, yeah. it seems like that's actually the scariest thing besides common. If polio makes a comeback, I'm going to be furious. Those diseases, <laughs> it like some, some, some resistant disease pops up, spreads throughout the planet, kills half the people, turns them into zombies. That's how it happens, though. That's literally, that, and that's a real, way more of a real problem. Like, that's what's killed off, what? 25% of humans in history? Yeah. Even, even more. I mean, the, the, it depends the, on... The like, bubonic plague literally killed a third to a half of Europe. That's not even... The, the one that... The uh, smallpox that killed all, everyone in the Americas killed over 85% of people. Think about when the yeah. age of... Oh, like when Columbus came over. The story is yeah. crazy on how yeah. it happened. Oh, like yeah. some... They, 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 there's a podcast that does the backstory on what Well, it also... Because it doesn't just get spread through humans, but also through livestock. Yeah, so through pigs livestock. and cow carry smallpox. Right. And, like yeah. some guy in an island contracted it and then he, he, it was two week, you know, incubation period and he hopped on a boat and landed in Mexico and then by the time it was in Mexico, like before they ever even figured out, months later, ever, like six months later, everyone's dead. The whole, all, everyone in Mexico. Yeah, so we just live in this uh, earth that it's so interconnected and so we have these um, relationships, these, uh, just how we have, uh, you know, good relationships with these bacteria, we have parasitic relationships with all of these these bacteria, viruses, and other you know things, fungus that are that are trying to use us, that are trying to use us, the host to you know to to replicate, and uh, it's almost just like you know we're using each other, uh, and you know we're killing each other. It's all like we're just using each other's energy, borrowing each other's energy, and so these little buggers uh, are just like trying you know trying their best to you know just to to proliferate, and that's all they're trying to do. And like we've created this these vaccines to literally to wipe them off the earth. That's what we did with smallpox, thank God, because it was a terrible disease. Uh, so I've read. And and uh, I mean we we were close to doing it with with uh, some other things, but like yeah, there's polio. this movement. Yeah, uh, yeah, very close to polio. And, and the reason why polio is not getting completely eradicated because the Taliban in certain areas of Afghanistan, Pakistan, where it's the only place on earth where you can still get it, is they're preventing people from getting vaccines in order to get this disease cured. Uh, and and again, it's like okay, if you're saying you're an anti-vaxer in the U.S. or Europe. You are no better than the Taliban preventing pe- po- polio from being cured on Earth if you are not letting people get vaccinated here in the States, especially your children. And I get it. Maybe you don't want to get all the vaccines. Maybe you, you shouldn't get, you know, a hepatitis B vaccine when your child is one years old. Okay, that's fine. It's two weeks old. Maybe it can wait till it's four years old. It starts having some unprotected sex. Then go ahead. I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. But the measles. Little ones that we've go to Disney World, and now Disney World has a problem because like thousands of kids are getting the measles because they're all visiting in, they're all getting sick. It's like what happened with chicken pox, and when uh, I'm not, I don't think any of us are fathers here, you know, but you know, if your wife or your or your partner takes uh, your child you know, to a chicken pox party, so you make sure it gets sick, and like, all right, now <laughs> let it get into an oatmeal bath now. Wait, a chicken pox party? Yeah, those used to be real things uh, because the disease was much less severe when you were when you got it when you were younger, and it's because, uh, like many diseases, it's actually your immune system's response to the, the bacteria or the virus in the case of chicken pox, and that's what causes these clinical symptoms is, is your immune system. So when your immune system is very immature, like when you're young, it's not it's not very severe. You have it, you're immune to it, uh, which is similar to like when you are getting vaccine because you're giving this very weak, very um, non-potent uh, part of the virus. Uh, and so you develop an immunity and you don't actually have the clinical manifestation. So it's the same thing. And then once you get immune, you're immune for life. So yeah, there was these chicken pox parties that used to happen. So you don't have to... I need him to explain chicken pox first. I'm, 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 yeah, well, I was going to ask. I really don't... AIDS party, the same thing? <laughs> he, he took it there. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if I could... Ask that, but you know, I feel like it'd be a little inclusive, I guess. Inclusive, and I don't think it's a party that uh, uh, no one's immune system is ready for that still. Well, no, once you're no. There, like, you're, the, your immune system is not ready. You, you do know about these you know parties I mean? in uh, these these STD parties in Fort Lauderdale. So Fort Lauderdale and you know Miami Dade Broward County, the counties that we live in, uh, are. The counties with the highest incidence of syphilis and HIV in the entire country, and so there's yeah. so many people uh, with these sexually transmitted diseases that there's actually parties that people with AIDS and syphilis and basically all of the STDs you could possibly imagine. Yeah, but syphilis they, and gonorrhea, you can take care of with antibiotics, no? 
Uh, yes, yes. Actually, actually, to a point, right? You get to a certain point, you can't uh, treat exactly. Exactly. Yeah, anymore. syphilis. If it's too far gone, like there's primary syphilis, secondary syphilis, tertiary syphilis. Yeah, after a while, penicillin is not really going to help. Um, but but there are some things like you know HIV, herpes. There's many viruses that you cannot uh, that you can't treat. So the idea of these parties in Fort Lauderdale are that you already have HIV, and so you don't have to worry about it anymore. So you just go and have like the most unprotected sex. To your, you know, to your heart desires, you have like basically these HIV orgies. Can 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 the disease get any worse for any of the parties at that point? Or I mean, is it literally like a? It, it, it's like um, um, you, it's I, like the needle programs in certain states where if like, hey, you, if we're gonna have, you're gonna shoot up with heroin, you're gonna do it like in a heroin clinic. In I think like it's, especially in the Pacific Northwest, there's certain. Like, like if I'm doing heroin, I'd love to be in a heroin clinic where they take care of me, where I get care. You know, I forgot what they're they're called, but I mean, it, it sounds like the same thing, but with sex and mine's people. the virtual reality room where you get to hang out. But. Yeah, right. And then if you do overdose, they have the antidote. You know, they have the antidote right there, so you can't ever really, really die. Uh, so yeah, I mean that that would be that would be great. And, you know, everything. Uh, people have these awful habits, uh, sexual habits, uh, habits you know relating to. Don't uh, be puritanical. Don't call my sexual habits just <laughs> terrible. They're not they're terrible. Really terrible. They're, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt anyone's feelings. Uh, but you, you, you got you guys are you're all sick human beings, and we know that. <laughs> and not just with sex, but with 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 drugs and alcohol too. Uh, we have a we have a we have a we have a soft spot. Uh, and so knowing that we have these weaknesses, you know, Such I would hope our government would would help us with these you know these clinics, uh, and uh, you know would help us kind of you know work through these these sicknesses and these you know these bad habits that we have. I got a question. Um, Yes. Let's say we encounter alien species. Okay. What do you think the protocol will be for protecting us and protecting them from think alien diseases? Think, like, think about how many humans. How you think, yeah. How do you think we interact with that? There be so many humans that are going to want to have sex with this thing too. So I mean, th- just think about the passing of you know genetic code is going to be out of control. I don't think we're. You think we're gonna be like inter uh, having like interrelationships with these uh, soup, these beings? Like how do you I, know I, they I have? Took it, I took it there. I just wanted to know about you know horrific diseases, but he's looking at sexually. Horrific. It's gonna happen. Yeah, this thing about it, some human just they see a horse, they start fucking a horse in a field. You know, they do we, they do cross species. Found, okay, so, so here's a hypothetical. What if you found out this was a simulation, right? And you had access to the door to step outside the simulation, and you step outside, and then bam, do you know what we are? We're actually some some like tentacled freak race that's sitting in a machine with a helmet on and that's what we really look like some hideously ugly beast but now you can't get back in here and the only way for you to 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 get into the next simulation where you can fall back into a regular normal life is you have to have sex with one of the you know actual human <laughs> beings that's like you would you do it doesn't sound too bad <laughs> I have to see what they look like first. I'm a visual person. I can't just uh, imagine. I did, I did make believe for a few years already. I mean, I think I'm I thinking like hybrid. <laughs> anything with tentacles. Jellyfish I don't... hybrid. It's a hybrid jellyfish. Uh, hybrid Jabba the Hut, right? Oh, so and they're hairy. Yeah, and it's like velvety, but not in a nice way. You know, it's like rough against the skin. And then I, you can figure out how we're supposed to engage in a sexual act with them. But yeah, yeah. it's similar to those. Uh, you know, uh, would you do? You know, those questions that you'd always come up with, like you know. If you give them two awful, horrible, you know, sexual situations, like you know, with one, you know, a, mom or sister. Yeah, that's that's one. No, 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 mom or sister for you. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so I plead the fifth on on all those questions um, on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> that's a safe bet right there. I like where you went with that. But yeah, I could pretend for his uh, synopsis right there, scenario. I could bang the hybrid. Be fine. I'm just trying to get back in the system. Yeah, you're just trying to get back in the system. I'm just system. trying to get played. Yeah, I feel like right. there's a lot of people that would be like, well, they're going to start with, well, we're not in a simulation. And that's where I have problems with the argument. Well, here's the best part that how we deal with issues or problems now, that no issue or problem that we experience, especially in our lives in today's day and age, are ever actually as bad as we assume they are until we actually get there and we're like, oh, that wasn't that bad. So you've had this whole mental mind game, but you're actually plugged into a simulation this entire time and you've been trying to, you've been fighting yourself on saying, oh, you're not good enough or this thing is gonna be impossible. No, don't even do it. Just put this task off. It's gonna take forever. And now you've unplugged from the system, the system that's been holding you back. And now you have the opportunity to get put 
I don't know why, put yourself back in this place, and all you have to do is just bang the thing that you've been banging already in the imaginary world. <laughs> this is just going to be... The imaginary book. It's like it's, you've been prepared for... You've been prepped for this your whole imaginary life. <laughs> and now the opportunity is... So, literally, I just wrote a, the novel for the, for the real world of tentacle people and jellyfish. <laughs> and that's going to be sell out next blockbuster. So philosophically speaking, let's say that you knew for a fact that we were in simulation, right? You had access to knowing that fact, but no one else did. Okay. When you there's two questions. Number one, if you could say, try not laughing. How could you convince someone that this was a simulation? Like, what would you say to someone? Question number one, and then question number two is, how would you change your life? So if I had to convince someone, you have to convince someone. I would say, I would say, I would say uh, first. They would say, they would ask me, how do you uh, know that there's a simula simulation? And I would respond. How, by how saying, do you know there's a simulation? How do you know? I would say, well, how do you know that there's not a simulation? Because I banged the monster, dude. <laughs> and so then they're thinking about it. So now they have the idea in their minds that this is a possibility. I mean, hell, I mean, what? If, even if they're agnostic, like, I don't know what happens. Like, I don't know anything, really. I'm just like, I was just born 40 years ago. Like, what the hell? Like, for, I could very well be in a simulation right now. And so now once you get the wheels rolling, like, they, they're really starting to, like, think about it. And, you know, once you dive in deeper... Uh, you can you can probably get someone to believe anything. I mean, what evidence do you have <laughs> that there that we are in a simulation? Uh, because I haven't really heard the hard, any hard evidence, and I'm interested. You're the one who knows we're in the simulation. I know. Well, me. I don't know how to convince without evidence. How <laughs> yeah, is it convinced? I don't I don't have any evidence with me. Well, you could uh, I don't know invent evidence. <laughs> you know, listen. You I know, haven't you invented know anything. The guilty. You might as well just invent some evidence <laughs> and get people to believe it. Yeah, if you were that kind of a lawyer, if you were that good, you could just plant some evidence like where no evidence was there, then then yeah, you could win your case pretty okay. easily. So so we're not sure how we would prove it, right? It's it's, a, it's actually a philosophical question I've thought about before. I don't I don't know how I would convince people if I knew for a fact but no one else did, right? Um, no one's gonna believe you, I don't think. And so so then the next question is how would you act? And uh, how would I act if I knew this was a simulation? Like would we change it all? Do you think if you knew and you couldn't prove to anyone and you were stuck living in it, would that change how you how you've been? Yes, because there's different rules to the 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 power and of the civilization, or you know, there's rules kind of. You're yeah. still organic. Well, you still know your organic code with a with a cutoff point. Without what if you knew for a fact you're not a soul? Yeah, but like you look in the matrix, like oh, I don't, I am not still in communication with the person who has me plugged in to say, hey, teach me kung fu right now. Hey. Teach me how to handle these weapons so I can go develop a task or, you know, develop a skill to go off and, you know, train myself to earn money or tokens in the, in the system so I can, you know, be better off for myself because still money is going to be determinant on how and why you're going to be successful and what the things you're going to do within this the simulation of this game you're playing. Yeah, and I have a question about the simulation itself. So, are we in the simulation? Uh, so, if, if we are in the simulation, does that stand, does that uh, go to stand that people... 10,000 years ago in the, say, Greek or the Egyptian era, were they also just as much in the simulation as we are now? Or did the simulation start at some point? You're not that's doing a good job of convincing that's a, us. That's a, that's a great question, and there's a few ways to answer it, right? The Who's convincing who? Is, the, first, wait, the first way is, hypothetically, the simulation started yesterday, and that was the starting point. So you have all these memories of 10,000 years ago that never actually existed. You're the beginning of the code. They started right in the middle of Jeff Morse's life and that's one potential outcome or another version is that we started organically the simulation started four billion years ago and they just planted planted the seeds and watched it grow organically so we're just the start of some computer cone in the, in the middle of the of the vast majestic you know empty vast universe and then they planted us in here and it's all still part of the simulation it's simulations within a simulation Okay, okay. I mean, it could be either one of those theories, uh, or it just could be, it just could be the, that, that we are going back to that DNA molecule that just, we just see like the vast potential of, uh, you know, the DNA molecule, and then, you know, depending on the environment that it's in, and we know like all of these uh, animals and plants that inhabit Earth are completely like intricately related to like the, the Earth or the part of the Earth that it's in. Like we only see these type of lizards on this type of environment. So, 
Uh, the animals evolve based on the environment and the ones with the, uh, the better traits that were inherited uh, in order to deal with that environment that gave them the evolutionary advantage, proliferate their genes. So like, that's the science game we're, we're kind of um, leaning towards now. But you're creating like, this whole other theory that could very well overtake that. The, the simulation could also be based off rule, the rules from the real world. So it could have been replanted with the exact science game that you're describing, right? So, you know, another thing that, I, that I've been thinking about lately that's very important to me is um, aliens, like we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Serious aliens. To change the subject completely on it. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking about? Aliens. <laughs> no, this isn't. Aliens. So, uh, let's say hypothetically that we are the only being in the universe okay what do you think is the most important thing for us to do if you know we're the only being in the universe it's an interesting question and it's something i've thought about because we know like there could be this universe there could be this even multiverse where there's all these different universes and there's every possible thing you can imagine like there's theories like we're doing this exact same thing in another universe uh or like i'm also uh thinking like this whatever happened you know with this uh you know whole you know, the start of this DNA and the, you know, you know the, the, ma- the electrical soup that started everything, like whatever. This could be just one in 10,000 trillion, like, you know, like a 10 to the billionth power, some number so vast, we could be the only life in all of the universes. Like, you really just don't know. And so what do you do uh, knowing that? I don't think people are really thinking about that to like even make that uh, judgment call. They're really just trying to like go on with their day-to-day living. And so what we can do uh, is is really just just keep on proliferating. And because we're, we're, we're getting to the answer, we're getting closer and closer. So yeah, just keep getting closer and closer and, fig- and finding out the answers. Like we're, I feel like we're, so, we're on the cusp right now of, of the most uh, advanced time. Well, we are in the most advanced time in the history of Earth, probably the his- maybe the history of the universe for all I know because this could be so astronomically... Yeah, sure. uh, just rare. rare of an occurrence that's so what, the let's just not kill ourselves i think that's the the most important thing is don't kill ourselves because we have this tendency to create this technology that can easily kill ourselves in one day if we so cho- chose so don't kill ourselves and continue working together to to make all these um, advancements it seems stand. like the most obvious thing if we if the fermi's paradox is true if we are the only hold on explain the fermi's that, Fermi's paradox. We're just gonna we're just gonna smooth over it and say, John, when we heard from aliens, there's maybe the reason we haven't heard from aliens is because it's so rare for us to exist. There's some other great theories on why we could be the only ones in the universe. But if we are, if we are the only ones in the universe, it seems the most important thing for us to do as this rare, intelligent, complex being that somehow birthed itself can run through its planet, can travel into outer space, and and change its own atmosphere. We got to proliferate throughout the universe. It seems by far anything else doesn't matter. Like making, ensuring our survival and evolution into the future is the only thing that matters. Because if we die in this planet and it's so rare for something to be reborn, then, you know, see ya, the whole universe is fucked. But and it, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, that's it. But I think that comes down to, you know, a philosophy, you know, how you actually think about yourselves yeah, as, as, a, as a person because you know it's I think it's vice versa if you believe in Fermi's paradox or not and again the Fermi's paradox is a um, idea I don't want to say John Fermi but you know something Fermi scientists you know like Daniel was saying before good chance it was John good chance it was <laughs> J-O-N too John <laughs> um, that if so if you know uh, the universe is X, X old let's say 13.7 billion years old and you know we've existed and we've been able to advance technologically so far throughout this sh- such a short span of time to be able to reach out to the universe whether that is through the hubble telescope or through radio waves why hasn't anything come back to us if it has been more advanced or as advanced We're as still we still really early and still listening right we uh, uh, even on the, at least we have some other kind of radio you okay know? we can only see you know see 13.7 billion years in the past because that's as far as you know is the light we can see, which is, I think, so fascinating. But then also goes back to where is the center of the universe? Because technically we could be the center of the universe, and the universe could have been expanded from this point where we're at right now because 
you know, there really is no direction in outer space. There's really no direction once you get outside. I would say direction in general because once you get to a point, all right, if we can only look one way and, or just any direction and see, okay, light is going 13.7 billion years, light's traveled that way, and we're looking at it from this point, then it could be the metal. But again, back to the idea of philosophy. If we're looking at that, that we are the only creatures in the universe, or we aren't special and that there is intelligent life out there, I think it's going to really, really ignite the idea that you know we are gods and that there is something unique about all of us on this planet working and coexisting together like it's like a co-working space you know co-living co-working you know what <laughs> there's seven billion people on this planet we could all hypothetically hypothetically get our own planet and then be gods on our own planet and then we could charge people to come in and drink coffee and you know work there for an hour or two at a time do you know a good copywriter i want to write a mystical book <laughs> so it, once we have that idea, once that philosophy, you know, it's this idea that we're one planet and one species and we're all together, that that is the next move of evolution. It's the next move of, you know, us. It's not we're, gonna, we're not going to evolve physically. It's, it takes such a long time for any physical changes to happen or even like changes to our code and our DNA. Right? That's, the, that's the dumbest thing. It's, it's a moral and philosophical evolution and an understanding, and that's what we're trying to move towards, and that's where we're having the biggest, 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 not biggest, but t a very hard problem, a tough problem, is trying to have an understanding of why we should look after our fellow man, why we should say that this isn't okay and that this is good or enough is enough. And, you know, it's we're getting over that whole tribal aspect still, whether it's in politics, whether it's yeah. in, you know, how we want to give people medicine. Should everybody have health care? Shouldn't they have health care? Well, this is how society works and civilization works this way. And you got to go to a job and you got to work 40 hours a week. Well, I don't think you should have to work 40 hours a week. I think you can get away not doing it. Okay, well, how that's going to be betterment for society because this system doesn't work this way. Well, if you want to make a new system, you got to integrate everybody from the old system. Yeah. And it's a huge, huge, huge problem. There's obviously yeah. a huge necessity uh, to to expand what we consider our our, our tribe. And that was beautiful. That was really great because, uh, I mean, for as long as there's been Homo sapiens, like we have been caring, compassionate team workers, and all of these great human qualities. But to a small amount of, of human, uh, of, of other, you know, Homo sapiens uh, in our nearby proximity. But we're realizing that we're all one tribe, uh, and and you can even consider our tribe, you know, just you know maybe an, you know the life in general. Uh, so uh, I think it's an important thing to expand, uh, you know, what we what we consider, uh, what we define as as our tribe, because. You know, the more you, you fight, uh, you know, amongst one another, uh, you know, the worst, the worst, the whole uh, species is, is going to be. And, you know, obviously, the more that we work together and it's so possible now more than ever because of our technology uh, to, to actually work together to do this and to, to create, to, to innovate. Um, uh, so since we have this technology to, to, to do this um, and to create like a bigger tribe, then that, that is the next step. And until we until we reach that, uh, you know, I think. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be tough because we're really not gonna be really not gonna be collaborating. We're gonna be you know fighting and disagreeing over over stupid things. It's so hard to know whether I want to give a hug or I want to create a universe in which everyone gets to give hugs, but then I don't get to give a hug. <laughs> how could you create? That's how could you create a universe where everyone gets a hug? That's why we have the multiverse. Well, no, and well, that's why we have universal health care. No, well, let's uh. say <laughs> if you, if you focus your time and energy. Did on, you write Bernie Sanders' plan? Focus your time. If you focus your time and energy on the success of our planet for whatever perspective reason you have, to us being happier and healthier and to, more together. Let's say that does evolve us into some sort of future species. Then, by doing that, you've created sort of this world based on love in which everyone wants to be together. And yes, it's a Bernie Sanders beautiful universe. <laughs> I'm feeling the burn or already. You could just enjoy the warmth of a good hug. <laughs> I'll give you one after this. I got, I got yeah. Yeah. Uh, personally, I think. Just to go back a little bit to something you said, you said our physical bodies can't evolve. No, they can, but it's not going to, it takes a much longer time it, to do it that. It takes a very long time, and I don't, you're right, we, our, our mental game is going to evolve way differently than what's going to happen to our physical body in the next 100,000 years. It's going to do more because of, you know, our 
or, oh. or merges with the technology. I yes. think that's where you're going on the physicals. Exactly. So what? But maybe there's a maybe there's going to be a, a layer somewhere that can like craft the the you know the condition the perfect conditions of our planet but like at hyper speed and send you into like sped up time so i put myself in this body and like it speeds up the conditions of me living in some you know artificial beautiful world for a hundred thousand years and then i can come out and now i've got wings and i can fly you know and it's called a cocoon <laughs> I, the, my, problem, my problem with all of this inner space travel and aliens coming to visit us is that Things are so far apart. So even if you did travel at the speed of light, which Einstein proves he might be wrong that we can never travel uh, at the speed of light, or because else crazy our, things will happen our to your cells. Fall apart. I've, I've I've traveled at the speed of light, so so you know, so you know, yeah. it's not really you can't do it I on a daily basis. I my body was getting pulled apart. Oh, I didn't exactly. And so even travel, let's just say you can do it and your body wouldn't fall apart and you'd be and you'd be a okay mind, body and soul, just perfect. It would take you thousands of years to like even go from from solar system to solar system. So we're talking about intergalactical travel. It's not possible on unless you're unless you can uh, completely freeze yourself for hundreds of thousands of years. And who wants to do that? Who wants to just be frozen for 100,000 years? That's what we're talking about. The Fermi's paradox is that if we are going to see something and if we are going to have be visited by something it's probably going to be something mechanical it's probably going to be something robotic because you know that species that or you know uh, life life form or whatever that, send out a bot somewhere. but yeah. whoever did send it out is probably going to not even be around That's still great. By the time right. it gets here. So it's like there's no point. And even the bots. The bots can't live forever. I mean, my, my cell phone lasts like six months. Like Unless before it starts like getting bugs in it. <laughs> Unless they're Russian. What Russian do do? bots. <laughs> Russian bots will always make it. That's a good point. Alien skin would be like. Or what do you think human skin would be like 200 years, 200,000 years from now? 200,000 like well we won't be hum- we won't I don't think we'll be homo sapiens anymore it'll be something else I mean just like but it's getting hotter so I mean it's, our skin's gonna get a little browner it's gonna get hotter it's gonna get hotter for sure so our skin could get hairier to pre- pre- protect against the UV radiation that's uh, yeah because our you know between the fact that you know global warming and the so and the ozone uh dwindling down even though in some areas too many clothes though like so, what's a better away. what's a better defense? More melon in the skin or more hair? Well, it depends. The hair is good for the cold. Uh, melanin is good for UV to prevent g- cancers and UV radiation. So it depends what. So we, we need we need. Uh, so we probably are gonna have more melanin to prevent against the UV radiation because of our our dwindling uh, ozone. Oh, no. I imagine. Yeah. But well, and also the sun is just getting hotter. The sun's expanding. We're in a, with a red. Like a, not a red giant yet, but we're it's a it's a, it's a 150,000 years away from building an ozone layer. We're good. Yeah, but I mean that sun is expanding. It's getting bigger. It's going to engulf our planet eventually. Eventually. Yeah. That is the inevitable fate. That's the trajectory. That's the forecast. <laughs> That's the forecast is hot. forecast is nothing but sun. <laughs> you know we should rank meteorologists online. No, it's it's Steve's it's Steve's father's fault. Let's just be honest. It's always the sun's fault. It's his son's fault. It's Steve's father's son's fault. It's the son's son's fault. Exactly. I like what you did there. Two sons in a row. But different different vowel. One's a no, one's a you. Don't tell people that. <laughs> yeah, scratch that out. We, we can't use that anymore. Uh. A son's son's son. A story. Of Dude, I did not know you're moving up to Michigan. I heard this through the Wait, grapevine. What? You're moving to Michigan? I'm moving to Michigan. That was common knowledge. Uh, not to that... me, you know, right now. See? Right now, I found out yesterday. Moment. I'm going to Michigan. Why? Because I matched uh, in the AC Jimmy like match. Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> and we hit it off. We hit it off. And I'm going to Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I matched uh, in um, in, De- in Detroit, Michigan. You wow. know, for uh, for dermatology. So, uh, uh, Detroit's a solid place. Detroit's a great place. Yeah, it's gonna, I'm gonna excited. Cold. It's going to be cold. Where do you go? So uh, hopefully, so enjoy the sun and golfing, you guys. It won't engulf me, that's for sure. Uh, I'm going. Uh, I start July first. Is my first day. Holy shit! That's soon. No, that's, a year. that's like yeah, it's like ten months. <laughs> yeah, July first is done already. Yeah, sorry. sorry we're guys. we're worried about September first uh, right now. You know, universe, time, aliens. Yeah, are what is time really? <laughs> and, why don't you answer that question? The that's. I mean, it's a, it's in the fabric of space time. I mean, it's just there. Well, here's my hardest, my biggest per thing I ponder Our about time. Uh, Percocet, Molly Percocet, um, is that we really didn't start 
I would say calculating or recording or keeping track of time and still we came up with trains and that was a big problem too because we had to make sure everybody was on the same time because people would be traveling from different time zones so we had to make sure all these train stations were on the same time and once because they weren't actually on the same time oh, that there were so right. many train crashes right. happening right. so we really didn't start recording time until a certain point so you know we're able to you know track the measurement of light we talked about previously the speed of light and we can read how many years light has moved but you know to actually get a track of where we are there's could have been there could have been days that have slipped up in between zero when we started counting in uh, from bc to ad to now they could have missed a few days <laughs> and time is just weird the years are weird You're like there's these leap years where one one day of the year every four years is like oh, so, so some people if they are born on a leap year it's their birthday once every four years uh and so yeah it's these but this it's, is but weird it's not we, it's better not. I mean, no, they they age just I'll, like normal people I'll age, obviously. Age I'll count them still on March first. Yeah. Every th- at three and a four they, years, yeah, they or must. Day late. Which one do you pick? Day or either or. If I you got the twenty eighth or the first. If they're a girl, just like any other girl, if the whole week is their birthday. <laughs> 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 oh, those dominatrixes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope I hope we wouldn't I hope we wouldn't go there, but uh. It looks like we did. No, no. I, I don't. <laughs> it's not my bag. Oh, it's not my bag, baby. It's not my bag, baby. No, there was a girl on Tinder. Her, her, it's her, not her, mine. Her profile thing said, um, um, tell me what your, what your craziest fetish is. And I asked her, I said, has anyone told you their craziest fetish? And she said, no, do you want to be the first? And? Uh, I, I don't respond. I, I sure may, no, I responded to her. But yeah, but tell us what my crazy fetish is. Yeah, first of all, don't leave us hanging. This is, a, this is a great question for you to ask. Do you tell her your crazy fetish right away, or do you say like a mediocre fetish? Don't deflect. Do you You're say, being very wolfy right now. I'm, I'm not uh, a wolf, I'm a villager. I, uh, you, you can't I, leave us pondering. I've always been a villager. Jeff, don't get me starting to be pander, a pander him. <laughs> Jeff, um, what's your craziest fetish, Jeff? You're deflecting, dude. Yeah, you're, you're deflecting. No, no, no exactly. That was the whole point of this. But to get Jeff to tell us his craziest. Well, fetish. I haven't thought about that. Apparently, you answered that girl that asked you, and so you have one like already thought about. I have, to, I have to think about. It. I mean, I have some. But I mean, I like feet. I don't know. Does that count? Like feet? Feet are cool. That, that counts. Feet. So, what's your fetish? We just had feet guy in here. You missed out. Podiatrist. Doctor, oh, Doctor, Doctor, Doctor Foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Jaws. Doctor Hobby. Doctor uh, Wagner. Like that Seinfeld episode on the ass man. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Send me the foot doctor. Oh my God! So again, who's? What about feet? Just send you off. It's not, it's like, it's obviously female feet that, uh, you know, doesn't have any hair on it. You know, hair kind of is just an automatic, if it has like, even if a, a fo- female foot has like one hair I'm on really, like. I'm really going to look at the next female <laughs> foot I see, yeah. Even has one of those. I'm also going to check out the arch. <laughs> That's what I need. I need like a good, a good arch, you know, like flat feet. Don't do it for me. Uh, and- you're not my type anyways. <laughs> <laughs> So it needs to be a perfect foot, and you know you don't really have that many of those out there. So uh, <laughs> when when so much so much call it a fetish as an appreciation for a, a very fine foot. Do you have, do you look through foot model, foot catalogs, foot model? Like what's a good foot model? Have you tried reaching out to any, seeing if they're available? Yeah, there should be like a, a Tinder for feet because so I think a lot of people have these uh, these fetishes, and so the feet really determine. If I have, I, there could be this super hot girl. Dude, if she has bad feet, like then no, toes, no, I don't want bad toes. Will send you off. Not, right. just I don't want no part of that. Mm. Yeah, you want no part of this, do you? <laughs> well, if you do Tinder for skin color, then you're racist. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's not a fet. What if it was a fetish? It is a fetish for some people. Yeah. It's called jungle fever. It's called <laughs> yellow fever. All right. Well, there's Tinder for fa- for farmers only, huh? What can, what's considered a farmer? There's there's some leeway in there. <laughs> hey Domingo, does that mean six minutes or? Oh, it's six o'clock. Oh, it's six. Got it's it. six. 
All right. All right. Well, that so was are these our final session. words? That was a fun session. It, hap- it was just too short. Next time, uh, pencil me in for at least an hour and a half. <laughs> You're penciled in. <laughs> you're penciled in, dude. Dude, first of all, thanks so much. You know, you're the first, third time returning guest. You're going to be famous, Mo. Not us. <laughs> you are. I yeah. said they need to start, they need to uh, rename this show to, to, to On the Bus uh, with uh, Daniel Brandon and, and Jeff. I mean, that's that's only fitting. I mean, if you weren't moving to Detroit, we could talk about something, but yeah, we would do a spinoff. Yeah, you take the bus up to Detroit. Dude, off the bus with Jeff. Dr. Money P, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining and diving deep into the world of Tinder, into the world of fetishes, sex, fetishes, time, and time space, and aliens. Like Just like we planned it out. Where can the people find you? Where can the people find you? You guys can just find me on Facebook and Instagram. That's what I do. So go ahead, Facebook, Jeff Morris. I know there's a lot of those. You're just going to have to dig, do your research, and, and find me. Uh, Instagram might be easier, Jeff underscore Morris, but Morris is with a zero. So that's an important thing to, to realize. And so I'm so happy to be here. Uh, you know what they say, the best place to be is right here. <laughs> Never seen that before. <laughs> Never heard it. All right. Well, you know, you want to take away with the outros here, and we'll say goodbye with sweet nothings. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the show again. Guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button if you are listening to us on um, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify. Where else is there? iTunes. And if you love this episode, just like we do, make sure you leave a five-star review. Leave a review. And make sure you share this episode to you know anybody else in your network that you think may have enjoyed. Whether you thought this was entertaining, whether you thought this was comedic, whether you learned something or not, share it. We really appreciate it. We're really thankful for that. And... If you want to help support this podcast even more than you already have, go on over to greenroadsworld.com. Use promo code on the bus, O N T H E B U S, for a 15% discount on any and every CBD products over at Green Roads World. Keen Se Percento. Keen Percento. And give yourself, it's not just something to support this podcast, it's something to help make your life a little better, whether that's reducing inflammation, whichever way you think you want to do that. There's topical creams, there's ointments. There are the gummies, there's coffee, there's tea. Give yourself or your friends the gift of good CBD. health today. CBD. And last but not least, you have the Amazon portal. Thanks to everybody who shopped over at the Amazon portal at onthebuspodcast.com. It's on the homepage. It's on one of the lead pages right there. Thank you, everybody, who has shopping. Thank you if you are still listening to me this far into the show. I wouldn't say I appreciate it. I'm a little curious to why you're still listening, but <laughs> that's besides the point. Go shop till you drop. Amazon.com. And the bus is out. We'll see you. We'll see you. Bye. <laughs> Check. This is the moment uh, for those who.